Hi, my name is Josh and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over shifting. So what you want to do is make sure that your clutch is pressed all the way in and then we'll go over into first gear and uh, when you're... What? What? Talking about shifting on a bike. Oh, sh That makes more sense. Okay, we'll meet you inside. Well, I guess we're looking at bicycle shifting today, so let's dive right in. Okay, so today I've got this Sight A3, and uh, it's equipped with a Shimano Dior drivetrain. Um, now, what we go over in today's video is going to be specific to this drivetrain, but it applies to SRAM, GX, NX, uh, really any group set aside from electronic. Before we adjust the cable tension, what we want to do is adjust our limit screws. So the limit screws essentially lock out the derailleur from moving outside of its given range of movement. So it's these two guys here and they back up against a little plate there. So that's going to that's going to limit how far the derailleur is allowed to move outboard and inboard. So that's going to stop it from popping your chain off up against the frame or throwing your chain off into the spokes. So on the Shimano 12 speed derailleurs, this forward limit screw adjusts the limit at this smaller end of your cassette and then we can see here that our guide our guide wheel on the derailleur is a little bit too far outboard uh, so we just we want to get that chain to line up so that it sits straight underneath so i'm going to spin this until it pushes that in there right about to there it's pretty good it's nice and straight so that this upper guide wheel is sitting exactly right below that cassette cog Okay, so next up we're gonna check the low limit and to do that, we're gonna go ahead and shift this as far up as it's gonna go. It might not go all the way. Our, our shifting is really bad right now. So there it is up there. And now I can see that this limit is actually too tight. So it's not even letting the derailleur go all the way into that 51 tooth gear. So then I'm gonna put it into our low limit screw here. I'm just gonna back this off and I can even turn the crank while I do it. See when that's going to go up. I think my cable tension. Might, oh, okay. No, we're good. I'm just going to peek in there, and same as the other one, I want that to sit pretty well below there. This is at least a good starting point. We can come back and adjust it by you know an eighth of a turn, a quarter of a turn once we get our shifting, just to get it maybe a little bit tighter as we come to double check everything once we're done. All right. So now that we're up in this top gear, what we're going to do is adjust our B gap. Um, and what this screw does is it changes the height that the guide wheel sits from the cassette cogs. If we go around the bike, you can see Shimano actually gives us a little indicator here. See, there's, they've got that little line and it says 51T. So we want that line to land right at the tips of our cassette teeth. So with that limit screw, I'm just going to back it up to loosen it here. And we're going to go right up until that line lines up with the cassette teeth. So right about there. And that ensures that we have the appropriate gap between the top of this guide wheel to the cassette cogs. Now we need to go and uh, adjust our cable tension to actually adjust the shift performance. On a mountain bike, we find the barrel adjuster on the shifter, whereas on a road bike, it would be located at the derailleur side. They both function exactly the same way. They're just located differently on different styles of group set. I usually like to start from the bottom and then I'll do my first shift up. And see, I, I did one shift up, it went up, and then it dropped back down. So that's indicating that I don't have enough cable tension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the shifter, and I'm going to turn this lefty-loosey to increase tension to help it go up. So I'll do a few clicks there, and then we're going to come back and check in again. It's a little slow, but it's, it's making its way up. And a little hesitation there, but we made it all the way up to the top. Now what we'll do is, with your shifting performance, you want to find the happy medium between speed going up and speed going down. So now we're going to test it going down and see how quick that is. So what I'm noticing right now is that there's like no hesitation going down. So what I'm going to do is increase the tension to help it go up a little bit. And this time we're just going to do three clicks there, just small amount. All 
All right, that's looking pretty good there. So if you find that your barrel adjuster can't go, uh, it can't go lefty loosey enough or righty tighty enough, if you've kind of reached either limit of your barrel adjuster's ability to adjust, then what we'll do is reset the barrel adjuster's position and then we'll change the tension at the cable side and then we'll go back to micro adjusting with the barrel adjuster. So I'll show you that right now. So if your barrel adjuster looks like this, where you've gone lefty loosey so far that now your barrel adjuster is actually all the way out and you can't adjust any further, of course we would need to thread this all the way back in. We're gonna go all the way there. And then we don't wanna start from like fully stopped. Again, fully stopped is gonna be another problem where you can't reduce tension. So if you find that it's all the way tight, we don't want that either. So we'll just go about five clicks out, five to eight, like somewhere in that, somewhere in that range where you've got enough adjustability in either direction to micro adjust your shifting. With our barrel adjuster set in the correct position, what I'm gonna do is loosen up this bolt and I'm just gonna Hold this cable roughly in place. You don't really need to pull it super tight, especially on these Shimano drivetrains. The cable sits pretty loose when it's in its bottom gear. And then we'll just snug that into place. And keep in mind too that the cable routing on this guy is designed to loop around this here. So it doesn't just go straight out the back. It does this little half circle. And once again, this is looking pretty good. We'll just verify that it's downshifting properly. And we're all set. So in conclusion, once you're done with your limit screws and your B-tension, the majority of your shift adjustment is just gonna be that finicky part with the barrel adjuster. All right, well that wasn't the car video that I thought I was signing up for, but hopefully you guys learned how to adjust your shifting on your own. And uh, if you liked the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and as always, stay tuned for more.